All right, guys, we are back in it. We're playing Hooked on You. I finished day one yesterday, so I'm going to play the second day. I don't know what's in store for me, what terrible things I'm going to go through, but I gotta tell you, after stopping the game yesterday, I kept thinking about it, and I really want it today to come so I can play it again. All right, thank you so much, and let's get started. You open your eyes, the sun is shining, there's not a cloud in the sky, and you feel great, totally well rested. You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by the campfire, but woke up several yards down the beach. That is actually pretty interesting. Wait, are you on vacation? Was yesterday nothing, nothing more than a strange dream? No, not a dream. You really are here for another day. Why? I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. Speaking of weirdos, I see the rest of the gang is hanging out on the beach. This is definitely not a dream. I wouldn't rule out a nightmare just yet. Though, at least they make for a sexy, a sexy bunch, no? And talk about sexy, here comes Trickster, carrying coffee. Oh man, I need some coffee. That just reminds me I need some. Morning, beautiful. I thought you might like a nice cup of joe to start this incredible day off right. I would like a nice cup of joe, yes. In real life. I need to turn down my uh, phone volume because I didn't expect a phone call right now that he poisoned that definitely trickster seems suspiciously cheerful i'm sure there's nothing nefarious behind his joyful demeanor though like there's a a, a skull smoke cloud coming out of it everyone knows musicians are morning people i also want to wish you luck today is an important one my only regret is that i won't be a bigger part of it budgeting issues also, I am just swamped with engagements, especially on the other island. Trickster winks at you. If you want to ask him how to reach the other island now is the top. Never mind, he left. Now is the time. Well, at least he brought me a cup of... No, wait, don't drink that. What the hell was that? They don't call him Trickster because he's good at on a skateboard. And he definitely, definitely didn't get that name because he brings people drinks so they can have a good morning. That was almost certainly not coffee. And I don't want anyone casually poisoning, imprisoning, and torturing you yet. This is supposed to be a tropical paradise, the type of place you give a five out of five, 10 out of 10, two thumbs up review to, not an internal prison of pain. And please make sure to leave a review. It really helps with the algorithms. Just trust me, I'm looking out for you. So can we please move on? Hey, wait a second. How did a possibly ominous, omniscient, possibly unreliable narrator physically just knock that coffee out of your hand? This is not parliament and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak out of turn at this moment. I need no recognition for I am the ocean. I dominate the land. I submerge those who defy me and become their watery grave. Like, what were the developers thinking when they added the ocean as a character? <laughs> he's like, he's, he's really ominous. Actually, speaking of graves, I would like to say something, something of grave importance. Fine, go ahead. Even if this place is an eternal prison of pain and I'm not saying it is, even a place of extreme horror can still receive a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, th thumbs up review if it was crafted with love and or that's the type of thing you're into. You know, the ocean is right. A lot of hard work goes into a place like this. You should really judge it on the artist's intent. And whenever possible, start from the mindset of giving them the benefit of the doubt. Constructing these elaborate simulations, uh, I mean, vacations is not easy to do. Sometimes there are some small bugs or inconsistencies, 
but that's just the nature of the process. Perfection is overrated. The universe is filled with mysteries. We ought to celebrate those who venture to bear their souls as part of the creative process with the ultimate intent of making things for our enjoyment, not be overly critical of them. Are you two trying to sell me on this place actually being good? You don't have to say it, it say it like that, especially after I saved you from the that poorly made cup of coffee. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we should have been here five minutes ago. They always do this on the second morning. Sad, really. Even if they do make some great points. Oh, sure. They make great points, I agree. Can we please move on? Yes, of course. Apologies, Lola. The last few minutes aside, have you been enjoying your time here on the island? I, it would be great if I could date either Dwight or Claudette. That would be so cool. Yes, I've been having a lovely time. Yes, it's been really entertaining. Yes, I'm not suspicious. There's no no option. <laughs> yes, I'm not suspicious that there's no no option here. What an encouraging response and we're so glad you're not suspicious hey claudette maybe lola isn't suspicious because they figured out what they're actually doing here zero chance they're still clicking even right now to see how you'll respond hey look at that yeah they don't know anything it doesn't matter though lola we're so happy to hear you're having fun i didn't say i was having fun we're all having fun, Lola. Do you hear us? We're all having fun. <laughs> we do need to ask you one more question, though. We all had to sign away our rights to say anything negative about this place. Oh, really? That's why there was no no option. Would you please sign this non disparagement agreement? Uh, no, I'm not. No. No, I will not say anything negative about this island. You have my word that I, Lola, agree with the terms of this verbal contract. Perfect. Delightful. Excellent. Yes, yes. Hey, Lola, it's still totally cool if you have constructive feedback. The place to leave that is in a positive review because we all know that nobody reads negative reviews of games or resorts like this. Anyway, I see Dwight and Claudette have gone into a trance. And with the grumbling I hear from your belly, that can mean only one thing. Breakfast. <laughs> Making the ocean sound like Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> Perfect timing. Everyone rolls into the dining area to lard up those sexy little bellies with pancakes and bacon and so much for in maintaining these beach bods. We're all half naked in a tropical paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? A yogurt? Magic powers will only get you so far. Even killers watch their sodium intake. You take your plate and sit down, thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again, except all in one day on a beautiful and mysterious island. It's it looks like you're not the only one doing some introspection, though. Trapper stands up to talk about how his day went, in case anyone was wondering. Personally, I wasn't. To be honest, I didn't expect you to survive yesterday, so congrats, I guess. Whether you survive today is 50-50 at best. Good luck. Well, that was bizarre. Back to your break. Nope. Now Huttress steps up to talk about her feelings. At this point, Anything could happen. I'm open to all the possibilities that this strange island has in store. I'm like just looking at her short hair because I never realized she had short hair because she's always wearing that long gown thing on her head. How open-minded. Oh well, that surely must be. No one else would weirdly stand up during breakfast too. And just like that, here comes spirit. If it looks especially well rested this morning, if I look especially well rested this morning, it's because 
It's not because I slept well. As you know, I'm much too dedicated to fighting revenge to ever sleep again. But because you all really left me alone yesterday to be my best, not consistently annoyed self. And I thank you for that. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to quietly resenting being trapped here with you all while looking cute doing so. Guessing Wraith has had enough time to work up the courage to speak in front of a group. Ah, oh, perfect. There he is. Take us home, Wraith. Oh, hey. That was fun yesterday, huh? Yeah, I mean, not like too much fun. That would be weird, but like uh, a good, like a good amount of fun. And now, they're all looking at you expectantly. Wait, are you supposed to stand up and explain how yesterday made you feel? Uh, I think I need to process everything by myself. I'll see you all soon. Dang. What a power play. Keep them wanting more. You're getting good at this game. Uh, uh, sexy true to life experience. Shame you didn't get to eat any breakfast, but so be it. <laughs> After breakfast, you head to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. Before you get there, though, something catches your attention. You hear that? Who are you addressing? Me? Well, yeah, I guess. That is okay, right? You know, I might be pursuing a relationship with one of these four fine killers, but it feels like the person I'm getting to know the most is you, narrator. It's only okay in so much as it serves to illustrate that you've lost your mind, seeing how I'm not real and all. Yeah, I heard it this time. I think it's coming from behind the pool shed. No, no, stick it in there. A little more. Wait, this is Dwight talking? A little more, oh yeah, that's it, yes. That is so weird, Dwight. <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> Claudette. <laughs> is Claudette pegging Dwight? Oh my gosh, intense, nice. Yeah, that feels right. <laughs> this is <laughs> this, this is uncomfortable. Now I want you to take that and put it right. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that. Just like that. Exactly like that. I swear, I had no idea these two even do uh, whatever it is they are doing. I'm afraid to look. Please say something so they know you're close by and can hear everything. Uh, oh wow, look at this super cool bottle of Trickster brand suntan lotion someone left on the chair. Anyone know where I can buy some? Damn it! Ah, oh, come on, a little privacy please. Dwight is panting and Claudette has a crazed look in her eyes. Sorry, I didn't know how else to let you know I was here and that I could hear you, well, you know. Know what? What do you think we were doing? You were doing, I don't know exactly what you were doing, but it sounded like, uh, fun? You think two people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oops. We get five minutes to ourselves every day and we spend it hoping if we stab each other in just the right spot, we won't get resurrected. Oh, wait. So that's what's happening here. So they, they're trying to murder each other and not get resurrected to the island. So we're we're still in the entity, right? The entity is controlling this island. That means Jeff, who was eaten just yesterday, he's he might be able to come back, right? He probably resurrected somewhere. I've come to believe that the key is finding the exact place we need to bleed out from. And I believe that place is in our pancreas. Appendix. Why did I say pancreas? Why else would it be there? Makes sense to me. Did you actually think we were me and him, Dwight? <laughs> you don't have to laugh that hard. They get it. <laughs> they, they needed to make the image here where she's not mad, but she's like cracking up hysterically. My life is a nightmare, and yet somehow it never... It's never been worse than right now. 
Let's go, lover boy. I noted all our entry rooms and our five minutes is up anyway. Good luck, Lola. You're going to need it. And hey, if you figure out how to escape this island, please make sure your ghost tells us how. That was both a tragedy and a comedy. A uh, crag midi? That, he's, he's reaching. That, he's reaching hard. Wouldn't it be trad? Trag midi? I don't know. Not crag. Mm, shut up, I like it. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, you're heading to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was in short a lot. So far, today has been exhausting too. But you're dedicated to achieving a true centered sense of calm. No drama, no bullcrap, just soaking up sun in a heated pool. Today, you're on a date with you. Oh, I like that. I want to be on a date with me. Who would make the first move? And aside from that disturbing thought, all is going to plan until a shadow blocks your precious sun. Spiky tipped like a palm tree is bending over to screw with you. But it's no tree at all. It's, I bet it's the wraith. Hey babe, oh, it's the trickster. Breakfast was weird, huh? Everyone just getting up and announcing how they're feeling? What's that about? Some forced kind of check-in with the group? I don't like it. Fishy, kinda lazy. Whatever though, breakfast is dumb. No one should eat before noon or after 4 p.m. So he's, <laughs> he does um, he does uh, the, the fasting thing. Uh, la, 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 la. I don't even remember. Intermittent fasting. Yeah, I do intermittent fasting. You seen my abs, by the way? I called it. Maybe you can see them later at my private stage on the other side. You know, IP Island, where all the Hollywood celebs hang out. If you play your cards right, I could give you a private show. Why is he angry? Catch you around. Why is he angry at me when he's talking like that? His abs are pretty amazing. You gotta give him that. And that blow up bat, threatening but adorable, makes for an interesting silhouette. Genius design. Ah, so it is a blow up bat. It is a balloon. He's a psychopath, just like the rest of them. You don't gotta give him anything. And we're not best friends. Just because we had a little talk about doing a little talking, it's not an open invitation to go smashing the fourth wall every five seconds. Okay, now that that guy is gone and we've got some ground rules established that we're definitely going to abide by, it's time to lay back, take some deep, slow breaths, and nope, another shadow. These people will not leave you alone. Let's see who it is this time. Oh, it's Ray. That checks out. You two have gotten pretty cozy. How? I just answered questions and he really loved the answers. Hi, sorry if this is uh, too forward, but um, do you want to get out of here? I know a place that's, it's kind of, I mean, it's got, well, it's hard to explain. Actually, it's kind of weird. You know what? If you want to go somewhere else with someone else, I totally understand. But if you want to see something weird and interesting, um, let me know, I guess. You've been around Rafe long enough to realize that this rambling speech was actually him being incredibly brave and asking you out. But before you de can decide if you want to go off with Rafe, the Huntress interjects. Hey, just wanted to give you a chance to head out with me to a cute beach house instead of wherever this guy is going to take you. I, I kind of like that. He'll probably read you some poetry and force you to learn about Petrov's chest defense. I mean, if you want to learn about some other Russian moves, I got you covered. Whoa. <laughs> Does she mean? I'm talking about Verena, yeah. The traditional Russian folk dance. Oh, give me a moment, guys. All right, yeah. So uh, she wasn't talking about, uh, yeah. You guys got third dirty thoughts, man. Yeah, the traditional Russian folk dance. You all have your minds in the gutter. And if I'm honest, I love it. <laughs> Tough choice. 
you weigh your options quickly because you can only go on one date today and you also don't want to be hacked to pieces for saying the wrong thing. It's always good to remember that those are all cold-blooded killers, but you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I thought I was hitting it off with spirit, but apparently I was hitting it off more with rape. So this is uh, interesting. And then die a horrible, wretching, writhing death after drinking it because the lemons were poisoned all along. Sorry, this island has really got me tilted. So who will it be? Uh, Huntress. Huntress. Dommy Mommy. Woo! I, I gotta go with Huntress. Whee! <laughs> She's so happy. Whoa, wait. Forest friend. So this is uh, the achievement for it. You and Huntress make your way to the secluded beach house. You sure that's a secluded beach house? That's probably like her house. Your heart thrums in your chest. Don't look it up. Thrums is a real word, I swear. Yeah, I, I felt like that was a weird way to say the word. <laughs> I kind of want to look it up just to know what it means because I don't know what it means. Are these nerves of excitement or terror? Isn't it fun to mix the sexy and the horrifying? Huntress is quiet as a mouse as she guides you through the island forest. You struggle to keep up with her. She moves like a jungle cat, all muscle and silent leaps across thorny bush. Brush. I don't like that she keeps taking out that axe when she's excited to see me. She halts suddenly and you crash into her, having been desperately trying to keep up. You follow her gaze and realize that you've arrived arrived a cabin in the woods obligatory in nearly all horror films and stories and you've come here willingly with a fearsome killer great job well i got she's hot come on you can't deny that <laughs> the cabin is cozy but something seems off about it you can't quite put your finger on what it is huntress stares at you through her bunny mask cocking her head to the side as if trying to gauge your reaction to her hideaway. Are you going to invite me inside? Why do I, you need an invitation? Are you a vampire? <laughs> That's a good question, I guess. Yeah, especially on this island. Haha, <laughs> no. Oh. Oh, did I say something wrong? She's like, look at me weird. Is it just me or did Huntress seem a little disappointed? Oh, I guess she does seem disappointed. Didn't peg her for a lover of the fang. But hey, I don't judge. Come in. Let's explore. Yeah, let's explore. What's What What you got? You follow her inside. It's creepy, rickety, and definitely not up to cold. But it has a certain homey charm. You're quite the decorator. She blushes. Indeed she is. It's really nice on the inside. Outside it looks terrible, but inside it looks great. A chandelier made of bones hangs in del delicately from the foyer ceiling and a collection of trinkets lines the mantel. They look fantastic. I wish I could see this bone chandelier. Something tells you that the people who once owned this th these things are not of this mortal coil anymore. Could you be Huntress's next victim? The thought gives you a wicked thrill. Hey! She's looking at you again. What do you think of my collection? I'm more of a minimalist. That's terrible to say here. I could learn to like this. It's, it's so much. I could learn to like this. These are all terrible choices. Why would you say this? I would say they look great. I could certainly learn to like this. The whole place, it's quite tactile. There's so much to look at. The organized chaos makes me want to craft things with my hands. I knew you'd like it here. You have the eye of someone who appreciates fine stolen things. <laughs> yes, I appreciate the theft of things. 
<laughs> Didn't know a better way to say that. <laughs> I can't wait to go treasure hunting with you. We could find so many more goodies on the island. But first, what do you think of the other killers on the island? I mean, Trickster is pretty out there, but everyone else seems like they have interesting backstories and whatnot. A little gossip, huh? What are you playing at, Lola? Huntress considers this for a beat. She seems to have two modes, thoughtful and explosive. You hope to never be in the splash zone when the explosive part emerges. Why, are you jealous? Before you can answer, the house begins to shake. Huntress loses her balance on the termite-infested floor and falls into your arms. She would crush me. Seriously, she's all muscle. Like, she is beefy. Like, if she were to fall into my arms, I'm falling on the ground, and she's crushing me. <laughs> you are not mad about it, but before you have time to enjoy taking this moment in, what type of termites are these? What? Oh no, it's an attack. A horde of killer crabs invaded through the crevices in the poorly constructed cabin. Okay, yeah, they're not they're not termites. Those are flesh-eating crabs. They race at you and Huntress in swarms, cloaking their razor-sharp claws at you. You must act quickly. What will you do? Shield Huntress. Run and hide. Grab a Shashka. I'm gonna shield Huntress. I probably will die though. Shield Huntress. You step in front of Huntress. Prepare to use your body to shield her from the onslaught of crabbage. I'll save you, Huntress. Oof. Huntress can take care of herself. It's sort of her whole thing. Haven't you been paying attention? Oh, she doesn't like that. Ha hey, save some fun for me. Huntress is immediately between you and the crabs, hip checking you out of the way before splitting open crab shell after crab shell like your uncle at an all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. I guess that was the wrong thing to do. Uh, I, I think I lost points with her. Huntress sits down on the wicker couch and begins cleaning the guts off her hatchet. It's an obligatory scene for every killer. Oh yeah, every time they hit someone, they have to clean the, the weapon. You're just happy to not be the source of what she's wiping off. Looks like we're having crab for dinner. She doesn't smile at your joke. She has that ponderous look on her face again. You join her on the couch. Man, sometimes those near-death experiences really get me thinking about what I want in life. I think I'd really like to start a family one day. How about you? Of course, maybe one day with the right person. No way, not for me. Maybe one day with the right person. I mean, it's a life-changing decision. You have to make sure it's right. Huntress smiles coyly. A good answer. You never know what kind of weirdos are out there. <laughs> says the says the killer, right? <laughs> says the killer who feasts on animals and human flesh. What were you like as a kid? You try to imagine this giantess as a meek child in a puffer suit wan wandering about the forest. Huntress chuckles, her laugh quite cute and soft. I was so innocent we hunted to survive, then went back to the cottage and mother would tell me stories and we'd drink tea and imagine a life far away from the woods, somewhere like this. I suppose I finally achieved what she always wanted from me, but since coming here, something feels off. It's beautiful and warm and everyone is so attractive, like thirst traps galore. But don't you get the feeling that something is coming for us? Coming for us? Oh no, she's onto you. But onto you about what? Swirling memories rush through your head. Nightmares, visions of a dark cloud, Claudette and Dwight's vacant stares that belie some sort of hypnosis. Am I hypnotized and my memory erased and I'm supposed to be here to kill them or something? I don't know. Or stop this whole, whole entity stuff? I don't know. This is so confusing. Quick, validate her theory or try to push try and push it off not really totally i think you're on to something what do you know how long have you been 
uh, you all been here? Do you remember anything at all about why we might be here? I've been having these dreams, seeing things. I think we are all serving some greater purpose here. Huntress reveals a strange object that she stole from the near from near the stage where Trickster performs. It has some strange symbol on it. Interesting. Truthfully, it doesn't seem that strange to you. It's just a glass bottle. However, the label is interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting label. She hands it over to you. But before she can explain her theory, Claudia and Dwight burst in on you and interrupt. We have a dramatic announcement, but it needs to happen back at the beach. Okay, guys. Thanks for the interruption. They're like joints at the hip, <laughs> literally. You arrive at the beach and realize you were set up. There's no big announcement after all. What we have here is a good old-fashioned rivalry. It's true, exactly like the voice that we cannot hear and certainly aren't referencing says. We were forced to interrupt your lovely date by another killer. They are here and ready to make you an offer of love you won't be able to deny. What? Trapper emerges from the water. Is he in slow motion? He's pure thirst. He's Paul Newman on horseback. He's Denzel on the cover of GQ. Manly manliness brought to life. You interrupted my wonderful time with the Huntress so that you can like emerge from water and prance towards me. Also, was he holding his breath under there this whole time waiting for his cue? That's commitment to a bit if I've ever seen it. Heard you spent the day in a quaint cottage. That's cute. How about a quaint mansion? Or better yet, how about one on each continent? Yeah, I'm including Antarctica. I'm really, really rich. Think of how cozy we can get there in a snowy 10 bedroom ch ch tia che chatai. <laughs> I can't pronounce that. <laughs> one of those pools that is half indoor half outdoor but nice and warm throughout that way you can kill a mama polar bear from the outside while watching her cubs cry over her body from the inside that's sick that is sick <laughs> i could picture it clearly but that's sick oh <laughs> wow trapper is the real deal and by real i do mean really and by deal i mean evil plus you really want to hunt for your food for the rest of your life. With me, you get it both ways. Savagery and someone to clean up after you. Sounds nice, huh? Uh, as if? That sounds amazing. Uh, as if? That life isn't for me, bro. I'm very impressed you can speak with implied quotations marks. Very cool. This guy is a total douche nozzle. Try hard much. He's like the turn of the century Pacific Northwest version of a Wall Street bro. Trust me, it tracks. Huntress was angry at first and now she's happy with my response. So that's good. Patrick Bateman with a huge chip on his shoulder. You wouldn't go with him if he were brandishing a cleaver at you. Oh crap, he is. Thanks, but no thanks. Give in to anger. Thanks, but no thanks. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm into a quieter lifestyle. I relish my independence, and I don't need someone to wi wipe my butt for me. <laughs> you run back into the huge arms of Huntress. She hugs you tight. So tight, you think you feel the life leave your body for just a moment, but it hurts so good. <laughs> it hurts so good. You know what? I'm impressed that you stood up to me. I appreciate someone giving me their totally honest opinion, even if that opinion makes me want to carve out your liver. And the butt wiping comment? That's not what I meant by clean up after you, but I'm hiring someone to do that for me the moment I get home. Trapper leaves and you turn to Huntress, walking in slow motion back into the water. Trapper walks back. Is he? Is this like a reference to like, Jason Voorhees, how Jason just walks out of the water. It's pretty weird. He's just gonna stay in there all night. He's just gonna stay in there all night? That was a question, sorry. Shall we continue our date? Yeah, we should. Let's go. 
You're gonna tell me something. Something. It's already nighttime. Jeez. Huntress leads you back to her cabin. You thought you remembered a way, but it's like the forest has completely changed. Nothing is similar. Familiar. Well, it's nighttime. Nothing's familiar at night. Better not get lost out there. Can you believe that guy? Classic trapper. Pulling a move like that. I'm so glad you chose me, though. I don't think we've explored all there is between us yet. Why you? Oh, she's angry at Trapper. That's why she has that face. She winks a bunny masked eye and scoops you up onto her back. Huntress runs through the woods with you piggyback riding her. The wind ruffles your hair. <laughs> this will make an amazing thumbnail doing this. Animals clear a path for the mighty woods woman as she races by like the lead from that famous teen vampire drama in that one scene where he calls her a spider monkey. Huntress doesn't call you that. Whee! <laughs> Eventually, she gently lowers you to the ground and you take in your surroundings a wooded clearing in the forest. Huntress prances about like a deer in the meadow. I like to come here sometimes to clear my head and hack up a few cute woodland creatures. Foxes are my favorite to slaughter. They think they are so cute and sly, but I see right through them. They're just jerks. <laughs> Great with hot sauce. If you if you want to serve it to me, then yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. <laughs> Huntress hears rustling and darts off to find its source. Crouching down low like an animal. Now you're alone in the middle of forest. Which way did she did you come from again? No idea. You sent your sense of direction is all off. A mel mellifluous voice floats through the air, landing upon your ears like syrupy honey. Come find me. Ready? Okay. I found her. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, I, uh, you miss. Holy smokes. Not bad. Oh my god. I'm never going to get a great skill check. Tag. 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 <laughs> you bop Huntress on the shoulder when you find her. She high fives you. You, you trying to date this young lady or just bro down all day? You're so good at hiding. I'm having a real blast. Thanks. They say it takes a 10,000 hours of practice to get good at something. Hey, they do say that. That was fun, huh? I keep trying to just relax and have a good time. But that's really hard for me. Anytime I let my guard down, something terrible happens. Like what? What about if we let our pants down? Whoa. Totally. Oh, like what? Like what? Oh, <laughs> I really want to go with the second option. But, uh. Oh, let's go like what? Like what? Sometimes I find young girls in the woods. Little perfect angels that need my protection. But if I turn my back for a moment, they wind up dying. That got dark, but you feel like Huntress wouldn't admit this to just anyone. Oh look, Claudette and Dwight are back. Okay, we swear we are here for a good reason this time. Yeah, no one is manipulating us this time. It's just time for dinner. Come get some grub. Oh, that would have been awkward. We let our pants down and then they come. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it written all over your face. You're shining. And that's not just the remaining anxious sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. No, no. You are really feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry. I'll keep your dirty little secrets. But enough gentle ribbing. It's time to get back to business. The alarm. All the uh -huh, appetizing singles have arrived for dinner. Including Trickster. Rafe is here too. We're not going to do the gag where we cram all them all on the screen at the same time again. So just believe me, they're all here and they're just as sexy and demented as you remember them. With your love on the line, everyone is being very careful not to offend you by saying the wrong thing. 
Congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm surprised as you are that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, but because you just met them yesterday. Okay, they're falling for me because I just met them yesterday? However, since Spirit seems like the biggest long shot to end up holding onto your heart, she throws caution to the wind and speaks up. It's a pretty small consolation prize for being the least love killer on Murderer's Island. But hey, letting him have this one moment in the spotlight is, is the least we can do. And heaven knows they won't do any better than that. Clearly I need to do a little bit more to be part of this group. Or I'll be alone forever. However, I don't eat. And I like being alone. So I take that all back. I don't care what the group has for dinner. As long as we start with shrimp cocktail. I saw a movie once where these ghosts turned shrimp cocktail into a haunted synchronized dance. And I'm still working out how they did it. You mean beetle? Lola, stop them from saying it. Battle shrimp? The most rare and delicious type of shrimp? <laughs> that would be, uh, what? Copyright <laughs> infringement if he says Beetlejuice? What just happened? Battle shrimp? Is this some new species? Because I've hunted many beetle and many shrimp. Oh, beetle shrimp. Sorry. Wow, I was saying it way wrong. And I've never heard of beetle shrimp. Why can't I press my keyboard anymore? Of course you haven't. Like Spirit says, they've got hypnotic power. Anyone who sees them soon forgets. Also, something to do with dancing. I wasn't going to say anything that dumb. No, I was going to say a Jew. <laughs> Excuse you, Lola. Now you were saying, Trapper, you've done all you can. I appreciate it. I'm gonna have to narrate us out of this somehow. Hold on. Are you afraid we might accidentally recite some spell and conjure a ghost? Because I hate to break it to you, but it's a bit late for that. And then a uh, 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 giant osprey sw swooped down and dropped a severed head on the table distracting everyone. Oh, so he's capable of doing stuff through his narration. Trapper! Hey! I've never seen this particular severed head before. What? This time, I'm being honest. Sorry. Not my finest work, but something had to be done. Something had to be done. Anything just to get him to shut up. We've got to be careful about which cultural references we get mixed up with is all. Dinner will be served shortly, but certainly Power Brokers would like to know about your day. Power Brokers? This is sponsored? Would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You're, you've had an interesting day, that's for sure. But how will you describe it to the others? Say too much or too little, and it could affect your standing with the group. Uh, okay. But don't just sit there saying nothing. Nothing is not an option. Tell of your brush with death joke about having kids uh all right they might like that today was nuts we went to hunters the secret cabin and killer crabs attacked us it's true i'll fall asleep tonight to the delicious sound of crunching crustaceans that would never have happened on my yacht i grind them up much more satisfying way to kill crabs at least those crab kinds of crabs I have a little comb for the other kind. Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now. And they are all very tired. Oh wait, no, sorry. That's a dreary supernatural horror thriller set in Antarctica. Not a charming parody dating sim set in an undisclosed tropical paradise. Bon Appetit! Oh, what did he say? I did Oh, gosh. Don't you mean bone? Oh, no. Almost everything we serve has a lot of bones in it. Even the vegetables. 
Impossible to avoid on this island. Every everyone eats without speaking. Tensions are rising, both of the sexual and deadly variety. When everyone finishes, Dwight and Claudette come back to clean up the table. They linger around you as they pick up your plate. Take a napkin and dust crumbs off the table. What would you like to say to the servants? Thank them or ignore them? Thank them. Your top-notch service is much appreciated. In fact, here. For us, just for doing our jobs? Thank you kindly. Everyone, if you would please be so kind as to follow us to the fire pit, we'd greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is going to happen, something that will change everything. You can go willingly or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice. Tough cookies. Did you have a choice on how you said that, dweeb? Yes, and I immediately regret how I did. Good. Something needs to change around here. Fire is rebirth. Fire illuminates the soul. I hope the fire isn't too smoky. Smoke hurts my eyes. I have plenty sensi pretty sensitive eyes. Also, horribly afraid of it. I, the fire, I mean, not my eyes. Because of a childhood trauma involving fire. And finally, everyone starts moving toward the fire pit. If only to get away from Rafe's complaining. You take a seat on a comfortable log, feeling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for other killers to take their places, wondering who will let want to tell a story this time. Will narrator tell a story? I bet they've got a stunningly creative mind. Hey, you think? Are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? Doesn't seem fair. Everyone makes their way in, but something unexpected happens. Nothing, nothing happens. Something almost always seems to be happening here, so nothing is probably not a great sign. Oh cool, and now everyone is looking at you. So you know, do something. Should I pick someone to tell a story or should, or we could play charades? Boggle. Uh, well, we were actually thinking, why don't you tell us a story? What? Me? What? Rafe points his spine and skull staff thingamajig at you. You duck out of its way. Who knows what that thing can do? Probably shoots lasers. Try not to bore us. We're just very interested in you. Don't speak for me, Huntress. Now you can't tell if you're warm from the fire or if it's your nerves heating up. Now that the fire is right here, but maybe if we stop talking about it all the time, we can start to pretend it's not here and doesn't, you know, threaten to burn us all alive. He's not supposed to hear me. Get out of here, Wraith. Lola was about to make an important decision about telling a story or not. Fine. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell the story. Sure, I'm game to tell a story. I hope it's a mystery. Trickster, get out of here. I forgot he was with us, actually. Uh, okay, so what type of story do you want to tell? Romance, adventure, action. Is it, it is a dating game. Maybe it should be romance. Romance it is. I'll tell a romantic story about two lovers who take poison together and die foaming at the mouth or about two strong hunters who meet when they both try to bludgeon the same wild wolverine not quite it's about my parents they met at a party in college he was hosting she'd been dragged there by some friends they couldn't have have been more different and yet as the night went on they were drawn to each other she made fun of his taste in music and he took an interest in her major, women's studies. They were married within two months. Bit soon to know if you can trust someone, don't you think? It's so sweet. Exactly. I learned a lot about love from them. If you know, you know. Some people don't need years to get acquainted with their partner. Love could spark from a mere look across the campfire. Now you've got their attention. Each killer is furiously attempting to catch your eye from across the fire pit. Except for Trickster, who has wandered over to the bar and is loudly playing his own music on headphones to drown you out. Okay, 
that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. Sorry, but this narrator keeps it real. We can't just end it and there. So who else would you like to hear a story from tonight? You look from killer to killer, trying to decide who might be the most interesting. I had a day with the Huntress, so maybe I should just have Huntress do it. But I do really love that first story the spirit did. I don't want to hear anything from the Trapper. He sounds like he's not a good storyteller. The Wraith might be a great storyteller, but I'm going to pick Huntress. Huntress, you seem raring to go. Let's hear from you. Sure thing. My neck of the woods isn't wanting for horrifying mythology. Mother once told me a story of a young man who was traveling back home after the war. Which war? Doesn't matter. I just wanted some backstory details to paint a picture. I'll paint you a picture if you want. The man was lost and running out of food rations. He stopped to rest for the night underneath a majestic birch tree. That's when he saw the woman, naked, skin glistening in a twilight glow. Hot, I'm invested. Wow, he ignored me and then he listens to Huntresses? Jeez. Wait, that means his music wasn't wasn't blocking me out anyways because he could still hear what she was saying. They sang a haunting melody as they made their way downhill towards the inviting lake. Enchanted by the music, the young man followed the parade of beautiful women until they stopped in the clearing next to the water. They turned to him and smiled. One woman with long hair, red hair, stepped forward and reached for his hand. The others began to play music. Flutes, lutes, tambourines. The melody was intoxicating. The man's feet began to move beneath him. He was dancing, moved by the magical music of these mysterious women. Twilight darkened into the night, and the man grew weary. But when he tried to still his moving feet, he found that he could not. Help! I cannot stop dancing, he cried to the nearest woman. A slender woman with green hair. She drew near to him, and he saw her features distort into something horrific. She was bloated, an eye hanging from one socket, skin the color of algae, a rus rusaka, rus rusalka, her true self. You never stop dancing, she screeched at him. My sisters and I were drawn in this lake by, drowned in this lake by men of your regiment. Consider this your punishment. The man cried out, but it wasn't me. Someone must pay, the Rusaka said, her voice filled with briny malice. And so the man danced and danced until his bones broke and she and his heart gave out the dance of death. A silent beat as everyone takes in this macabre ending. So it's not all bad. Rusalkas are also fertility goddesses. If a lady had stumbled across them, she would have been blessed with a fruitful womb and probably some candy for the road. Dang. Does she really think that's a happy ending? I want what Huntress is having. <laughs> How was story time? A lot of people like to take pot shots at sequels, but I think every good story deserves a follow up. When you think it's the end, the sequel is almost never as rewarding as the original. That's why I'm not I'm much more a fan of the episodic style of storytelling. Knowing it's a series takes a lot of pressure off of any individual installment and builds a greater sense of community between audience and creator. Tell me Lola, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? Don't answer that. We don't actually care. We just, we're just here to make sure that we seamlessly move on the next segment of the evening. God forbid my small talk get in the way of a romantic twilight moment. Dwight, I'm going to need you to shut your trap. Shut your yap trap. You know that we need to get back to that thing we do when whenever we're not on screen trying to kill each other. Okay, okay. You have fun tonight, and try not to wink wink, end up dead. Why did you say the words wink wink out loud? And what kind of double intend 
Kendrick are you getting at with the end of dead thing? Dwight is physically incapable of winking. He's winking right now, right? Or is that me winking? Wait, let me look at his eyes. Yeah, he's winking, see? Oh, but he's blinking, not winking. Winking's one eye. But since the accident, what accident? And you do know that all of these people are despicable criminals with double digit kill counts, right? Well, except for Spirit. She really doesn't belong here. She's strictly a victim, not a perpetrator. No wonder she's pissed. Did I hear somebody trash talking Spirit? Deal me in. What do you say we take this talk to the hot tub so I can soak this bod while I roast that ghost with some killer hot takes? Please, enough of talk of burns. Things that are lit or getting blazed. It's enough that these activities have to be set next to a literal fire. Must I be surrounded by figurative flames as well? What if we turned and run as far away from this place as we could, just you and me? On those spindly legs, you're probably tired. You probably tired before you got too far. If it's running away to someplace more secluded, Lola is after, they should obviously join me. Have you seen these legs? Pure power. Not that my walk speed reflect, really reflects my giant stature, but that's because I choose to move slowly for stealthy reasons. It's my own choice and it's completely logical. Why is everyone so obsessed with comparing themselves to each other and cheating, creating drama? I'm so over all that. Don't you get it? Society wants to trick you into fighting with each other so that corporations can swoop in and sell you fake solutions to all your fabricated problems. I'll be sitting in the shade drinking something locally sourced while thumbing through a public domain novella printed on recycled paper because I refuse to play their game anymore. It's like she's actively trying to be an unappealing, as unappealing as possible. Does it really turn anyone else on or just me? Okay, Trapper. Wow. Despite Trapper's insatiable appetite, it seems his attention, along with the attention of everyone else, is, is still on you for the moment. If you could, I don't know. Just pick one of us, maybe. We could move, all move on with our lives or, um, you know, some special projects we might have going. You heard him. Who will it be? Who will you head off with for an evening activity? I'm just saying, you may not get a ton of chances to date around like this before your time on Murderer's Island comes to a close. And no, I'm not satisfied with that name either. But with this streaming reality TV dating show boom happening, it's pretty much all that wasn't taken. Which killer will you pick? And yes, we're back to excluding Trickster because of uh, that guy. Okay, um, that whole conversation, like, I don't even know where they want to take me. The only one that I know is going to do something is Spirit's going to go read. I don't know what activities these other people have. I chose Huntress, like, a lot. And I don't really... My core is telling me don't do it again. So I want the Spirit, but how do I end up in the hot tub with her? In the last episode. Did I choose her? I don't know. I'll go with Spirit. Spirit? Oh, you picked me? Yay! Oh, she's so angry. Sorry, that was rude of me. I despise foes phoniness, so I should be honest with you. You make for interesting company. I love the idea of winning over these other killers at all costs. Even when I hate the game and the prize. But I had a long day. Floating subverting expectations, grinding my teeth as I imagine sweet, sweet revenge. It takes a lot out of me. So don't stop bringing your A game, all right? It might seem like I hate everything and get to really know who I am is an impossible task not worth trying, but too bad. You won't know unless you search deep inside yourself and bring everything you've got. Or just say the exact right thing at the right time and melt my cold heart in an instant. I don't know the rules here. Any better than you do. See you at the bar, I guess. The bar, that's where we were uh, the previous day, right? 
You arrive at the bar to find Dwight and Claudette, both hiding cocktail shakers, holding cocktail shakers, surrounded by a bevy of bottles for assorted booze. Who's ready to get wasted? Well, I don't drink, so not me. You really don't drink ever? Is that like a like because it will just fall out a hole in your stomach thing or uh, give me a moment, guys. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, I believe I just read this, right? It will just fall out of a hole in your stomach or... I don't drink alcohol because alcohol is poison of the body and the mind. And I don't need to act like a fool to have a good time Time thing. Good good choices. Good choices. I don't, I don't actually drink alcohol either. Then why did you choose a mixology class as your romance nighttime activity? Everyone knows this kind of date. It's just an excuse to get loaded up on booze and make terrible decisions. It's true, not a single person has ever learned anything at one of these things. Dwight, now that's not true. You learn how to tie a cherry knot in a stem using only your tongue. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, that's a talent right there. Just your tongue. See, instead of stabbing each other, you guys can really be having fun during your five minute breaks. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Who ordered the soda and with a splash of my private business? Because that's off menu. Well, I know what I'm drinking to forget tonight. Mixology is a real thing, and it doesn't require alcohol to be interesting. I'll have you all know that I worked at a restaurant before I was violently executed by your father, on whom you will have your bloody revenge, or vengeance, right, right? Real, well, so be it. How about you, Lola? Do you drink? Stay sober. I got the impression that tonight will be a night I want to remember perfectly. So I'm gonna pass on the alcoholic drinks. Here, here. Alcohol is a false escape. Besides, it's not like sober people can't have fun. You watch as Spirit picks up a plum cherry and roughly stabs a little plastic sword through it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Cherry juice splatters everywhere and it's little fruity guts flop out onto Spirit's lap. Oh, yeah. Oopsie! One of the upsides of wearing black, it's hardly shown stains. No, no take backsies. What? I don't get that. Okay, I'm so confused by that comment by the narrator. Sorry, I'm eating a popsicle, and it's so good. It's like uh, the chocolate popsicle with the chocolate exterior that like crumbles as you bite it, and it's just white ice cream on the inside. So, lovebirds, what drink shall we make? Fancy beer, zombie, Bloody Mary, dark and stormy. I just like the name of that, dark and stormy. How about a dark and stormy drink for my dark and stormy date? Okay, that one is cute. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't think of it at all. <laughs> but yeah. Please allow us to demonstrate how a dark and stormy is made. First, rum, or in this case, rum extract, and a bit of apple juice is poured over ice. So, rum extract and apple juice. I guess rum extract would be non alcoholic, right? If you just add that. It'll just add the flavor. And then fresh ginger beer is added in. Garnish with a lime wheel. And drink the end. Do you think you're up to the challenge of replicating this recipe, Lola? Replicating rough substitute and ginger beer over ice? Don't forget the lime wheel. Rum substitute and ginger beer over ice with a lime wheel. Not sure I appreciate your tone, but yes, you got it. You're a natural, a sassy natural. You and Dwight might have more in common than, don't you dare. <laughs> S 
Spirit seems to be in a lovely mood as she sips her dark and stormy. So she's actually drinking it. I thought it was going to fall out one of her holes or crevices that she has. She's not even rolling her eyes at your petty behavior. On cue, a literal dark storm begins to make its way in from the ocean. You taste your own dark and stormy as you watch the clouds approach. It's quite refreshing. Isn't this fun? It really is fun. Wow, you can really see like her bikini like this. Sorry. So <laughs> I was staring a little bit too long there. Honestly, it's the most drama-free fun I've had since I got there, got here. And since you picked a simple but delicious drink, we've got plenty of time left to relax. Wanna make out a little? Whoa, she's taking the lead. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> you breathe in a sip of your drink and immediately begin coughing before you can, can get a yes out. Lightning strikes a palm tree on the beach and immediately starts a fire. The activity ends abruptly as Claudette and Dwight usher the two of you away from the bar. Aw. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be too soon to be kissing anyone because especially if I'm with, the, like, the Huntress really, really likes me right now. I think she will murder me if she catches me kissing Spirit. The gang's all together again on the volleyball court. I thought it was nighttime and now it's, like, sunset. So it doesn't make sense. Unless the other side of the beach is getting darker. The already dark. But this side is still... Still, uh... Still doing its thing. The gang's all together again on the volleyball court. Seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was. Oh. Feels like I've been here a lot longer than that, actually. It's so late that the sun is already beginning to rise. Oh, wow. So we didn't even go to sleep. Better get this over with quickly so that I, I mean you, can get some beauty rest. I do recommend the eternal dam damnation of perpetual narrator dumb. Good thing you really used your time well since then. Really getting to know the gang, the brain, the mogul, the basket case, and the psychotic bunny girl. Which one's the brain? The brain would be the rape. The mogul would be the trapper. The basket case? The basket case, is he talking about the spirit? Okay, whatever. You know, the four types of people. <clears throat> anyway. Everyone is gathered on the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who Lola chooses. Again, I gotta pick someone? Come on, guys. This is too much. <clears throat> Who's ready for a round robin? How round are we talking? She's literally talking about a bird. <laughs> it's like... Wait, jeez. No, not to eat, Huntress. Each killer gets two minutes to tell you about all about the dream date they have planned for to for you tomorrow. In no particular order, which is a weird thing to mention, right? Almost like the order does matter. Trapper, why don't you go first? You think you deserve it, even if in this case it's a subtle dig. <clears throat> Stop talking. Trapper, without further ado, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable, not only in polite society, but within the narrative of this in-world event, and also the larger meta-narrative of a Dead by Daylight dating experience? Sometimes, you just gotta say it. Why, yes, thank you, I'd love to. So, Lola, you're thinking of picking me. Well, this is your final warning. Pick me and be punished. And rewarded. Tomorrow will suck. Probably, I'm not an easy guy to get along with. I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm hiding a secret on this island that will make fans crap themselves with excitement. <clears throat> if you like Trapper, you're going to love it. And if you're uh, not, and if not, you're a maggot. 
Also, everyone, even confident, sexy ladies in rabbit masks, better stay the hell away from my yacht. <clears throat> and time's up, everyone. Gosh, you, you'll need to dream about these options so you're ready to choose in the morning. Now go dream about all these swoon-worthy options so that you're ready to make a choice come dawn. I didn't hear everyone else's option. Have a swell night. Um, did you two forget to mention something? Haha, <laughs> oh gosh. How can we forget? Before you run off to slumber peacefully, there's one more thing to do. No reality survival dating competition parody will be complete without slinging, sing, sing, singling out one of our contestants who are who is already tittering on the edge of psychological break <clears throat> and giving them a little push hold up this has been a survival dating competition parody this entire time and i'm just now finding out about it come on signs were there you just didn't read them welcome to murderer's island it's now time to eliminate one of the killers oh it's like but a butchering, but it hurts even more worse. You can't kill a killer, but can you break their heart? Do you dare to even try? You mean, that's right. Tomorrow, one of these sexy slicers will not be eligible to take you on a date. Who's it gonna be? But why? Uh, because it's ro dramatic. Because it's surprising. Because it's a classic reversal of fate. And it will hurt someone's feelings. Someone dangerous. What's it gonna be, champ? What's your thought process here? Trapper seems like he might throttle you in your sleep if you eliminate him. That being said, at least you'd see him coming. Spirit could be anywhere. She floats, and I hear she can disappear. Hard to track. If, if you get rid of Wraith, he might cry. And although... I totally support normalizing men crying and being vulnerable. It just seems like he might be a, an ugly crier. Huntress, she might pretend to be okay with it, but then you'll start seeing her behind every tree. What I'm trying to say is, I don't envy you, boss. So which sociopath are you eliminating? <clears throat> Guys? Guys? When this conversation started about eliminations, I already know who I had in mind from the very start. And I'm going to choose that choice. I'll give you a few seconds to think about who you think I'm going to choose. And I'm gonna choose it. So, I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Bye, Trapper. This was very simple. I got the achievement. See ya, Trapper. Trapper, you scared the living crap out of me. You are eliminated. That's fair. Honestly, though, I don't care. You suck. But not in a good way. You bore me. You personality free maggot. I, it wouldn't even be fun to kill you. Which I was totally going to do tomorrow the first chance I got. So really, this is a win-win for both of us. Wow. That's, wow. That's why he wanted me to choose him on the date. He would have murdered me. Still might kill you though. Out of principle for eliminating me, sleep with both eyes open and have fun on your date tomorrow. Now that you've broken the heart, someone heartless, you should go get some shut eye. And don't worry too much about the broken heart you've left behind. Because of course, they'll be receiving a consolation prize. They might not go get to go home with Lola when this is all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. What's that even mean? That's right. We're sending our eliminated player home with... That's actually pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Like, they, behavior needs to like make this an actual product. I won't buy it for myself, but I could get it for someone else. And it's... The artwork is amazing. Their own mostly new trickster. Mostly new. <laughs> Someone's been using it. Trickster body pillow. The next best thing to the real trickster. It might not hug you back, but it definitely won't let try and stab you. And how do we know? Because I've tried it. 
That's right. It's Dwight Tested. That's that's disconcern. I think that is concerning. Claudette approved. I hope you sleep well tonight. So Claudette and Dwight used it. Lola, you're my hero for what you've accomplished. How can you sleep tonight knowing that what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean knowing that there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you'll do tomorrow? I don't know how. I don't know how you'll do it. But you better go before Dwight and Claudette come back and put you to sleep themselves. You know those two. Schedule, schedule, schedule! <clears throat> oh! The end game. End of day two. Wow, what a crazy way to end a day. An elimination. I didn't even know it was that kind of a game. Let's check in with everyone, especially with our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. The Huntress. We'll see how things go tomorrow, I suppose. I'm not expecting anything. I tend to shut my mind off during hard times. I know I seem all excited and devil may care. But the truth is, I'm really pessimist at heart. That tends to happen when... Your mother is cured by an elk when you were young. Yeah, how do you know? Well, I'll guess it's also the only thing you talk about. If you'll excuse me, I think I saw a raccoon over in that tree. And I'm feeling peckish. The Wraith. I don't really know what's happening here. I honestly haven't been paying attention. Oh, Lola. Sorry I forgot. I'm focusing on other things. More important things. One way or another, I won't be here for much longer. Trapper. Ugh. I don't handle reaction well. At least I don't think I do. No one has ever been dumb enough to reject me before. Yeah, the more I think about it, the angry I'm getting. And I'm a giant rage monster, so everyone in this room should be scared right now. Turn the camera off! Did I think there was a chance I might get eliminated? Yeah, I did. Did I care if I got eliminated? Not even a little. Does the volume of words I spend talking about how much I don't care about things signify a deeper yearning within me to be seen, heard, and validated by those around me? Nah. What? No, you're not a part of this. You don't get a confessional. The trickster. It's cool, man. I'm not a part of anything, you feel me? I'm not a cog in anyone's machine. I'm my own machine. This whole thing is pretty cute though. Charmingly low budget, old school marketing vibes. Not gonna lie, kinda wish I wasn't so busy right now. I'd definitely be down with a reality show style dating competition with survival elements. But I got my new album, upcoming tour, finalizing the new sneaker line, producing a limited series on my life, starting a new social media NFT crypto app, and doing these private gigs over on IP Island. My dudes, you gotta come check it out. IP Island, it's dope. It's where the real killers are hanging out. Fully licensed, no legal drama. Lawyers, take a hike. I'm gonna tell everyone that Trickster said that about them, don't worry. I'm talking your favorite established characters from all over pop culture that can't be seen on this island. Hell, you probably can't even mention them like ghost Don't you say it. Look, we get it. You're very popular and in demand, but we have a game to get back to. I don't want to get sued. Ghostface, come on. Whatever. I don't even care. I'm the trickster. See you around, Lola. You too, narrator. Uh, I have a name, you know. You do? Yes, seriously. They do not pay me enough to deal with you people. Is it my turn? What? No, no. It is not your turn. Your sentient water. How are you even sitting in that chair? What's a chair? 
It's the thing you're getting all wet. Now, it's gonna smell like mildew. Okay, rude. Fine, let's just get this over with. It's your turn, Ocean. Do your check-in. Check-in? I was just looking for the bathroom. Bathroom? Are you serious? It's down the hall to the left. It's okay, never mind. Never mind? What does that mean? No, not you two. This wasn't meant to be a confessional time for literally every character in this game. It's okay. We don't have to confess anything. We've just been working our butts off for two days straight and wanted to sit down somewhere. This chair is wet. Yeah, I think the ocean just peed on it. How is that pass? You know what? I don't care. You two are looking pretty pleased with yourselves. I've got something to confess. Oh, great. What's it gonna be? You ate glue in the second grade? You cheated on an Albert algebra test once? Watching Trapper get eliminated was the first time in this unending spiral staircase of pain that is my life that I felt even a modicum of joy. Every minute that I'm alive is a nightmare. This place, this sun, these sweet sugary drinks, it sounds fun for a long weekend. But for an eternity? The unrelenting rhythm of crashing waves and wailing seagulls is like a crescendoing song of evil that makes me question the very foundation of the universe. Why am I here? Why am I here? Why are any of us here? What kind of sentient being would do this? Please erase me from this existence. Make it so I was never born. Pull the plug on this experiment and let my soul be free. And please, please, get me out of this polo shirt. Okay. Let's get you to bed, buddy. I don't want to go to bed. Going to bed means eventually I'll have to wake up. Yikes. Huh. That was a weird way to end. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Let You let the camera roll long enough. Someone is bound to say something crazy. Anyways, seems like everyone, two days in paradise achievement, seems like everyone's had their shot to annoy me tonight. So hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow is gonna be a doozy. Yes, okay. Guys, I'm loving this game. I'm so loving this game. I love how it ends off with like the casting chair thingy and everyone doing their little I forgot the word it started with a C confession right right that's what it is confession I don't know whatever but this is awesome I love how this is this is done I really love how this is a dating game where if I displease someone they can actually murder me and I really love how I'm able <laughs> to piss off these killers by eliminating them night after night so if i have to say i think there's gonna be what like two more nights right if there's gonna be two more eliminations two more nights in this game so i'm probably halfway through the game already i don't know but there's a lot of achievements in this game and i think i'm gonna play it again and again thank you so much guys for joining me on this wonderful wonderful uh, like i love the storytelling in this this gameplay and see you next time, right? No matter what your time zone may be, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening. Bye-bye.